الله الرحمن الرحيم وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على سيدي محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين أما بعد فنسأل الله سبحانه وتعالى فنسأل الله عز وجل أن يجعلنا وإياكم من المستمعين للقول والمتبعين أحسنه إنه ولي ذلك والقادر عليه ثم أما بعد so now we are going to talk about شروط لوجوب الأداء the conditions which make it obligatory upon you to fast. Yani, the first one he says, Al-Mu'allif Hafidahullah Azza wa Jal, he says, As-sihatu min maradin. Yani, that a person should be healthy and not sick. But what does this mean? Like a lot of Muslims ask the question, like I'm feeling a bit dizzy, I have a slight headache. Like where do we define this kind of sickness which allows me not to fast, or maybe which obliges me to break my fast. So let us have a look. بأن يخاف زيادة المرض أو بطء البرء من المرض أو يكون صحيحا يخشى أن يمرض بالصوم. These are three things. يعني either when a person is afraid to become sick. Or a person fears that he's becoming healthy will be delayed by fasting. Or that, uh, sorry, the first one is that one is afraid that his sickness, sickness will increase. The second one is that his health, his being cured will be delayed. Or three, that he is not sick but is afraid to become sick. Now, the fear here is not he, for him to decide. It is for a doctor to decide, right? Like, you wake up in the morning, well, I think I'm going to get sick if I fast today. Well, then <laughs> that's, that's a problem, right? So they say it is either, it, it goes back to an expert or two, because it has, it's, it reoccurs. Meaning, like if you know that when you fast, for example, you have no doctor around. Last time when you fasted, all of a sudden you, you had a headache, you started trembling, shivering. And the doctor said, don't fast. Now, next Ramadan, you have the same thing. Same thing is happening. Well, now you can tell yourself, I'm not going to fast based on what the doctor said last time. Until I go to the doctor. And if he then says fast, then I will make up that day and so forth. So it is either a doctor or because it is reoccurring. Is that clear? No. So now they also say when you fear that your cure is being delayed. Who knows that? The doctor. It's not you. Okay. If there is no doctor around, then you go by, by what you feel honestly. No? Okay. He says, وَحُجَّةُ ذَلِكَ قَوْلُهُ جَلَّ وَعَلَىٰ فَمَنْ كَانَ مِنْكُمْ مَرِيضًا أَوْ عَلَىٰ سَفَرٍ فَعِدَّةٌ مِنْ أَيَّامٍ أُخَرٍ yani, When someone is sick or someone is a traveler, then he fasts the day, these days later on. Okay. So that's the first reason. No. So now, but the thing is, Barakallahu Fikum, sometimes the days are very long, aren't they? They're very long here. Uh, especially like two years ago, it was even longer. Like people were fasting for 17, 18 hours in some places, 19 hours. And that's very exhausting. Now, when you are a, a pilot, for example, even an international pilot, you need to fly all the time. You need to transport people no? in a bus, for example, on a train, subway. Uh, you need to operate people. You're a surgeon. Now, people say if you have, some people give a fatwa, they say, well, that's dangerous. So if you are not able to take off days off of work, then you shouldn't be fasting because you are putting people in danger. When you are exhausted, you can't concentrate and so forth. We say, no, this can't be a generalized fatwa. Why? Because fasting or not fasting is an individual thing and not a general thing. Is that understood already? Meaning that every single person should be observed and should be examined in a certain way. Meaning that it might be applicable for you, but not for that person. And every person, even though that he or she might know that eventually he or she will stop fasting, should start the day of Ramadan fasting unless one is really sick. Meaning that if I work, for example, I melt iron and gold in a factory. Sometimes these ovens, they are 3000 degrees Celsius or more, right? So I'm working there and these kettles, they are open, right? So it is very warm. I'm exhausted. 
uh, this might cost the life when I'm not what? When I'm not paying an enough attention, when I'm, not enough, uh, when I'm not sufficiently concentrated. So what happens now, we are going to tell these people, start fasting. And the moment you see that it becomes really, that it becomes dangerous for you, or you become a danger to others, then you break your fast. But you can't, because yesterday it happened, you can't say it will happen every day. So nobody who should be fasting is allowed to start his day while not fasting, even though that he might be expecting that eventually he might be exhausted or may come in a situation where he doesn't focus as much, but that doesn't give him the green light to start the day without fasting. Is that clear? Otherwise he would be sinning. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. And this is why also for students, and then, then I will answer your question, sometimes for students there was a fatwa in Belgium uh, from the Muslim authority in Belgium, and they said students and university students don't have to fast during the exam period. That's one of the strangest fatwas ever. You can't give a general fatwa like this, because people will do it while some of them might be able to do it. Some people study even better while they are fasting. The majority of victories of Muslims was while they, they were fasting. Fasting is the month of energy, the month of Quran, the month of prayer. The Muslim is never so active as when he, uh, as he is during the month of Ramadan, isn't it? Praying, Quran, visiting, eating, <laughs> whatever. So anyway, general fatwas are the most terrible thing that has been invented today. Al-fatwa ala al-hawa adatan bil-hawa. Now the fatwa online, on the air, is usually filled with hawa, with passion. There's a fatwa ala al-hawa takunu bil-hawa. No. Yes. Ah, that was your question. Okay. Subhanallah. Ajeeb. So, then the second one. So, we have Al-Khuluwu min haydin aw nifas. Yani, that one is free from menstruation or postnatal bleeding. فَعَنْ مُعَاذَةَ سَأَلَتَ عَائِشَةَ رَضِيَ اللَّهُ عَنْهَا فَقُلْتُ مَا بَالُ الْحَائِضِ تَقُضِ السَّوْمَ وَلَا تَقُضِ الصَّلَاةِ فقالت أحروريا أحرورية أنت قلت لست يعني so so this is very interesting يعني معاذ says asks عائشة رضي الله عنها يعني معاذ asks عائشة رضي الله عنها what is going on with a woman who menstruates that she makes up her fasting but not her prayer then Aisha radiallahu anha said, are you from the Hururiya? Yani, are you from the Khawarij? Are you from the Khawarij? Why? Because some, some would say they need to make up fasting, but also prayer. Like some of these kinds of verdicts have been given lately in Turkey as well. So are you, and then she said, no, I am not. Walakinni as'al. I, I, I'm just asking. Qalat, kana yusibuna dhalik. Yani, we, we used to have menstruation or postnatal bleeding and so forth nani fanu'mar biqada'i sawm wa la nu'mar biqada'i sala and we were um, obliged to make up our fasting but not our prayers now there can be a logic behind it but this logic will always remain a philosophical debate so you can say the reason why is because there are five prayers and this is more difficult because five prayers times, for example, seven or more or less is 35. To make it up is much more difficult than we could say no, fa making up fasting is more difficult, more exhausting. more. So it, it remains a philosophical debate. So very often in these kind of things, the first thing we need, need to do is سَمِعْنَا وَأَطَعْنَا And then we look for the illa. Yani we, 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 the first thing we say is we hear and we obey. And that is sufficient as a reason that Allah has ordered it. Because when you look at Surah Al-Ma'idah, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about the different kinds of animals we are allowed to eat and not allowed to eat, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that Allah yahkumu ma yurid. Allah yani, legislates whatever He wants. So you shouldn't be looking for any reason apart from that first reason. Because it's, it's an ibtila. Because some people would like to eat a certain kind of animal that is not allowed to, to, to be eaten. So it, is, it remains a test. The awamir wa nawahi is the test. And then usually people look for the reason behind it 
because they want to put their soul, their, their, their thoughts at rest. Okay, it's because of that. But maybe it's not. You understand? So this is why Aisha radiallahu anha didn't give any illa. She didn't give any hikmah, any wisdom behind it. She said, Kunna nu'mar yani bi qadai sawmi wa la nu'maru bi qadai salah. Yani we were ordered to do this and not to do that. Yani to make up uh, sawm, not prayers. Okay? Not to say that a woman who doesn't fast during the month of Ramadan because of menstruation, for example, that she is in a state of worship. Because she not fasting is being obedient to to, is being obedient to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you know so all the time that she doesn't fast while she wants to be fasting is worship and her broken heart that she says I would like to, like to fast has what? has even two dimensions one, she's not fasting, it's a worship two, she desires to f perform another worship to give something up for Allah it's a double worship so this is shaitan he saddens people. And then sometimes women ask the question, am I allowed to use medicine or, or, or pills, whatever, to stop menstruation so that I can what, fast all of Ramadan? We say no. This is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who has created the woman like that. And her not fasting is a form of worship. And secondly, stopping this process is not healthy anyway for the body. It deregulates the body and everything which has to do with it. So no, there's no reason for this. There's no reason whatsoever. Okay. Then, Al-Iqamatu Fala yajibu ada'u siyami ramadana ala al-musafir. Yani then secondly, Al-Iqama. Yani is that you should be, yani in order for sawm to be obligatory upon you, is that you are a resident and not a traveler. Fala yajibu ada'u siyami ramadana ala al-musafir. So the, the, the musafir, the traveler, does not have to fast. نعم. ولكن يجب عليه قضاؤه يعني but he's obliged to make up the fasting نعم. والحجة في ذلك نعم. and the, the, the argumentation or the proof that we deliver for this is أو على سفر فعدة من أيام أخر or when someone is traveling then what? then he makes it up later on so now what is important Abdullah ibn Abbas رضي الله عنه the companion made it very clear that sometimes we can have something which is a, a bid'a ah, um, in thinking that one is sinning while one is not sinning. Meaning, like he said that if someone performs Salat al-Duha every morning, like when the sun rises, you perform your Salat al-Duha, Shuluq, whatever, you pray this. Now, sometimes he said you should leave it. Be so that you wouldn't feel like a sinner when you leave it. You understand? Sometimes when you don't do something, you will feel like if you were sinning and that that which you are doing is bad. While in reality, Barakallahu Fikum, you are not doing anything wrong. Is that clear? So anyway, um, so sometimes people feel bad because they don't fast while they are traveling. They say, but my travel is not difficult. I'm on a plane. The Prophet ﷺ used to travel on a camel. Now we are just sitting. I'm flying. Travel, the Prophet ﷺ made it clear that the safar is qit'atun min al adab. Safar is a portion of punishment. It's always a kind of exhaustion, of fatigue, always. Even if you travel on a train, you feel it, right? So shaitan then comes and says, no, you should be fasting. You, he also wants you to feel bad taking Allah's ease. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves for the servant to accept his presence, yani, where he makes it easy upon the servant. He loves this. Like when you give someone a present and you say, I don't want it. Keep it for yourself. I don't need it. That's not polite, is it? So let us have a look. An Hamza tabni Amrin radiallahu anhu qal, Kultu ya Rasulallah, inni sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, inni sahibu dhuhrin u'alijuhu usafiru alayhi wa... Naam. He says, I have mounts that I rent. Naam. Dhuhr. Yani dhuhr. He, he has animals that he rents out. Sorry. So anyway, he said, Ya Rasulullah, I'm a young person. And I go out and I mount these animals and then I'm traveling. And he said, but I am young. 
I'm able to what? I'm able to fast. Should I then be fasting, Ya Rasulullah, when it is easy for me? Or is it better for me to leave it and then pay it back as a debt? And then the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he asked Ya Rasulullah, when I fast, is this a bigger reward than if I were not to fast? And then the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, whatever you choose, meaning it doesn't matter. It's not better, it's not worse. You see, it doesn't matter. Because both are allowed, right? So here, and this is in Mustadrak of Imam al-Hakim. And then, عن أبي سعيد الخدري رضي الله عنه قال كنا نغزو مع رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم في رمضان فمنا الصائم ومنا المفطر فلا يجد الصائم على المفطر ولا المفطر على الصائم يرون أن من وجد قوة فصام فإن ذلك حسن ويرون أن من وجد ضعفا فأفطر فإن ذلك حسن يعني he said in the time of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم we were in a battle during the month of Ramadan some amongst us were fasting and some, some amongst us were what? How do you say not fasting? Is there not one word to describe it? Eating. Yeah. Some of us were fasting and others were eating. And those who were fasting didn't have any grudges against those who didn't. And those who didn't fast didn't have any grudges uh, uh, against those who were fasting. And they were considering this to be good and that to be good. And in the hadith it says, those who found strength to fast were fasting. And those who felt they were weakened, what? They didn't fast. So can we take away from this that when you find strength, that it's better to you to, for you to fast? Let us have a look. He says, عن أنس, عن أنس بن مالك رضي الله عنه قال, من أفطر فرخصة. وَمَنْ صَامَ فَالصَّوْمُ أَفْضَلُ Yani, if you don't fast, even if it's without a reason, even if you have strength, then this is what? Then this is facilitated by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And if you fast, so if you don't fast, it's a facilitation. There's nothing wrong with it. And if you do fast, then fasting is better. You see, if you do fast, then fasting is better. I'm a bit tired. I drove six hours today. Yes. Yesterday I taught in Belgium until 11 o'clock at night. Then I woke up this morning. We drove six hours from Belgium to... My, uh, to, to uh, then I changed my clothes and came in here. <laughs> so, yeah. And then I taught one hour and a half online. Then I taught any oh, first class here and this is the second one. So if you see me go like, oop, that's me being awake and sleepy at the same time. But not meaning I'm not enjoying what I'm doing because I, I want to finish this. Yes. Let me know if you need a coffee. I would like a coffee. Because I just felt like my brain was going asleep while my body was awake. <laughs> but anyway, let's continue. So we said, um, Sida Abdullah, Sida Abdullah, we said <clears throat> that if one finds the strength to fast, then fasting is better. But even if one finds the strength to fast and he or she doesn't, he's not a wrongdoer. Is, is that clear? There is no, no blame on that person. Yes, during the safar. Yes, during the safar. But of course, if, if one finds uh, Imam al-Nawawi, a Shafi, uh, of course, and he, he, he has some different approaches here. And he says when someone finds strength, then it's better for him, and he strongly liked for him to fast. It would be disliked not to fast. If someone is weakened, but not up to a degree where he falls short in what he needs to do or to concentrate on one, what he needs to concentrate on, then it is better for him to continue fasting. And if he is weakened, like really weak, then it's better for him to break his fast. No? So we have all is good. Fasting is better, but no blame if you, if you don't fast while traveling. Okay. الثالث شروط لصحة الأداء. Yes. We we are going to talk about this as well later on. Yeah, inshallah. شروط لصحة الأداء. The conditions 
which need to be present for your fasting to be a correct fasting. That's shurud sihatil ada or al ada. The first one is a niyatu. Fala yasihu ada usawmi illa bin niyya. Yani be intention. There, even if you were not to eat and drink without an intention during all Ramadan, that's problematic. You need an intention because the Prophet ﷺ said, إِنَّمَا الْأَعْمَالُ بِالنِّيَّاتِ He says, وَسَيَأْتِي تَفْصِيلُ ذَلِكَ بِإِذْنِ اللَّهِ يعني عن, uh, سَيَأْتِي تَفْصِيلُ الْكَلَامِ عَنْ أَحْكَامِ النِّيَّةِ He will later on in detail talk about everything which has to do with intention. Now it's just to mention these shurut. That's all he wants to do here. Yes. Uh, that's what he said. All the details will come. Okay. Yes. So what, what he's trying to do now is just mention the conditions without getting into details. So all the details which have to do with, condi- with intention, yani, you will find more than you can dream of. Okay. Um, yes. And Aisha, then he says, الْخُلُوُ عَمَّا يُنَافِيهِ مِنْ حَيْدٍ وَنِفَاسٍ وَعَمَّا يُفْسِدُ Yani he says, and the second condition for the psalm to be accepted and legit is that one is free of everything which goes against an accepted psalm. Like being in, this, in the state of menstruation or postnatal bleeding or of anything which breaks the psalm. Is that clear? He says, وَلَا يُشْتَرَطُ الْخُلُوُ عَنِ الْجَنَابَةِ وَإِنْ أَثِمَ بِتَرْكِ الصَّلَاةِ مَثَلًا yani, if someone is in janaba, yani in a state where someone has been intimate or when someone had a dream and so forth. So uh, when someone is in a state of janaba, then that doesn't annul his psalm. Is that clear? So even if you wake up and it would be time for psalm and one would be in the state of janaba because of, uh, because of, being, uh, of doing something before the sunrise, then your psalm would still be sahih. No? And if you then miss your prayer, yani then that's another sin, that's a sin. But being in Janaba does not what? Um, annul your, your what? Your song. Then, An Aisha radiallahu anha qalat kana Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam yudrikuhu al-fajru fi ramadana wa huwa junub naam min, khay- min ghayri hulmin fa yaghtasil wa yasum. You know, in this hadith, which is in Sahih Muslim, the Aisha radiallahu anha says the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sometimes in the month of Ramadan it would be Fajr while he was in the state of Janaba, not because of an erotic dream meaning because of intimacy and then he would perform the ghusl and fast. Is that clear? Okay. Jazakallah khairan. Thank you so much. I hope you made it like very strong. It was so beautiful. Like, he's teaching uh, us a bit how to shoot arrows. In, I never saw him shoot, just once. That was like 10 minutes ago. He said, yes, when you, it's not to praise you, it's just be happy with what Allah gave you, right? So, and we are there like thinking, okay, we, we can't even hit anything almost, but it's becoming better now. And then he says, yes, what, what, what you need to do when you take the arrow, you know, put your sh- shoulders to the back and you just go, and you say, Allah, boom, right in the bullseye. And I said, okay, now I know why he's my teacher. <laughs> so this is when you are an expert, when you shoot correctly without aiming. <laughs> you just made it worse. <laughs> like uh, this hadith is in the Sahil Bukhari. Oh, sorry, I wasn't even thinking, you know. <laughs> MashaAllah, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward you for your effort. I mean, and for always being in the mosque. And, you know, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa one day, and he came and he said, where is that lady who is dressed in black? And they said, who? He says, the one that cleans the mosque. They said, she died yesterday. And then he was like, annoyed is the wrong word, but he didn't like it. And he said, why didn't you tell me? And he said, they thought it was an insignificant person. She, she was just a lady cleaning the mosque, right? And then he said, bring me to her. And then they stood at her gra- grave and made dua for her. So, and people say, this is one of the merits of people who take care of the mosque that is that the dua for the Prophet ﷺ is for them and they will have light in their graves because they were light in the mosque so when you are here when everybody is gone and you keep on doing this then just think about that hadith it's so beautiful subhanallah 
نعم سبحان الله اند ذن ان انذر حديث يعني ام سلمه رضي الله عنها said كان رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم يصبح جنبا من جماع ثم لا لا يفطر ولا يقضي نعم and this is also in sahih muslim the prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم would sometimes wake up in a state of janaba she, she said because of intimacy and not because of a dream and then he would not eat and he would not make up the day meaning that if someone wakes up in janaba none that he can just continue what fasting it doesn't put you in a state where you are not fasting no. yes al matlab sabi' niyyatu siyam yani the the seventh research is about the niyya the condition in some وتفصيل الكلام في أحكام النية في النقاط التالية. يعني he says he's going to divide it. He's an academic. Now he's a professor, right? Uh, and the head of the Hanafi uh, fiqh department in uh, Jamiat al Balqa. Now, so he wrote more than I think now 100 books, all about fiqh, all about fiqh. Subhanallah. So um, anyway, al I, I I I regret I only studied two books with him. We did. Um, Tuhfat al-Muluk and al-Lubab or in a part of Hashiyat al-Tahtawi Al-Ula ta'rif al-Niyya wa talafudu biha Yani first getting to know the Niyya and saying the Niyya out loud Awalan lughatan Yani nawaituhu and waituhu ay qasattuhu Yani I aim for something Niyya is wanting something, wanting to attain something Walismu al-Niyya ثم خصت النية في غالب الاستعمال بعزم القلب على أمر من الأمور. يعني it is about what you want to do with your heart. نية is referring to what is your intention. Then he says اصطلاحا هي جزم القلب على ما يريد الاتيان به من من الصوم. يعني it is that you have the intention to worship Allah سبحانه وتعالى by fasting. نعم. Then he says أو معرفته بقلبه أنه يصوم. Now that he, while fasting, is aware that he is fasting to please Allah. So that's another way to say it. He says, um, and then he says, وَاَعْتُبِرَ قِيَامُهُ لِسَّحُورِ بِقَصْدِ الصَّوْمْ نِيَّةِ Important. He says, and waking up in the morning, you say, oh, I need to wake up now because I still need to take my futur. He says, this is niya. Even though you didn't say fasting. You woke up with the niya to what? To have your breakfast before sunrise. That is a niya. Nam. Yes. That's the same thing. Like you have your, your. But we will see whether in the Hanafi fiqh one niya at the beginning is sufficient, yes or no, right? But yani, we we say what we say that when if you were to put your alarm clock, then your alarm clock is your niya. Right? So that's it. No. Allah. He says, يُسْتَحَبُّ لِصَائِمِ أَنْ يَتَلَفَّضَ بِنِيَّتِهِ لِمَا فِي التَّلَفُّضِ مِنِ الْاسْتِحْضَارِ لِلْنِيَّةِ وَتَلَفُّضُهُ هَكَذَا نَوَيْتُ أَنْ أَصُومَ غَدًا أَوْ هَذَا الْيَوْمَ إِنْ نَوَى نَهَارًا لِلَّهِ عَزَّ وَجَلَّ مِنْ فَرْضِ رَمَضَانِ يعني, He says, and it is recommended for the sa'im to say, I have the intention to fast tomorrow. Why? Especially today, we should know that our fuqaha, barakallahu feekum, yani they say these things because they know that we live in a time where people forget. We do many things without even thinking about them, right? The proof is our biggest worship, we sometimes forget. Allahu Akbar, oh yeah, it's dhuhr. Sometimes people say Allahu Akbar, true, right? You say Allahu Akbar and then you ask yourself, is this Maghrib or Rashaa? Ah, Maghrib. Well, this is wrong. You should start all over again. Because the niya should be for, before, yani before you end your takbiratul ihram, right? So if you don't know which prayer you are praying and you're already after the takbir, you need to start your prayer again. And this is why our scholars say, like, at-talaffudu bi niya fi asliha bid'ah. Now meaning, pronouncing the niya out loud is an innovation. Lughatan. La shara'an. Yani from a linguistic point of view, it is something new. But if it helps you, to do that which is fard, مَا لَا يَتِمْ الْوَاجِبُ إِلَى بِهِ فَهُوَ وَاجِبُ Yani that which is a means to the wajib, 
and without which it does not happen is wajib. So if your niyyah in the salah is wajib and you can only do it by doing talafudu, by saying the niyyah out loud, then saying the niyyah out loud without disturbing people next to you, I mean, it's not like Allahu Akbar, Allah, you know, just for yourself, becomes wajib. The same with some. Because if you don't have your niyyah, you, you're just looking at the news and everything and you, you fall asleep and then you wake up after Fajr, then you might have a problem according to the madhab you follow. Right? If you had a, if, if in your madhab you need to renew your niyyah every night, for example, you see? So this is why our scholars, they give us the advice to do talafud bin niyyah, yani, and this is mustahab. Yani mustahab because it leads to completing a wajib. وَلَا تُبْتِلُ النِّيَّةَ بِالْمَشِيئَةَ يعني وَلَا تُبْتِلُ النِّيَّةَ بِالْمَشِيئَةَ أي أصوم غدا إن شاء الله لأنه يقصد الاستعانة وطلب التوفيق لا حقيقة الاستثناء. نعم. So when even if someone would say I'm fasting, إن شاء الله tomorrow I will be fasting, this is also a niya. Because when he says إن شاء الله, he doesn't mean it like the cultural إن شاء الله. Are you coming tomorrow? إن شاء الله, meaning I'll see. No. When he means أصوم, uh, if God wants, I will be fasting. So it is a form of dua, it is a form of relying upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this mashia, when it's a religious insha'Allah, is no problem. When it is a, tr- a cultural insha'Allah, I will see, then that's shek. That's doubt. Okay? He says, لَوْ نَوَى الصِّيَامَ وَهُوَ يُصَلِّي فَإِنَّ نِيَّتَهُ صَحِيحَةٌ وَلَا تَفْسُدُ الصَّلَاءِ إِلَّا إِذَا تَلَفَّضَ بِالنِّيَّةِ so even if you have the niyyah while you are praying, I will fast, then that niyyah in your salah is accepted. But you are not allowed to say the niyyah out loud. If you say the niyyah out loud, your salah is batila. No? Your salah is batila. Unless you say, for example, in your dua, in, in fajr prayer, for example, you say, for example, Ya Rabbi a'inni ala sawm al Oh Allah, assist me to fast today. In your dua, you're saying this. Well, this is then also niyyah. Because you're asking Allah to help you in your fasting. Is that clear? So, it is either by thinking or, or whatever it may be. The reason why you cannot say, well, why? why is this necessary? Well, maybe you woke up with Fajr and it's about your, your, the prayer time is about to what? To expire. So now you say, Allahu Akbar, and you might forget your niyyah because you didn't wake up before what? Before sunrise. Or you didn't wake up on time. So this is why they say you can then do yani, your niyyah in your salah. Is it, does that make sense? So our scholars, when they say this, it's not just for the fun of it or the sake of it. You should know that our books of madahib, they are built on, <laughs> on more than 1,200 years of information. So even if some of the things don't appear as logical to you, they have included... All the things which people would ask the scholars and the jurists, they have included it in books. And maybe it's not for you, but maybe for somebody else. You see? So now he says, لَوْ نَوَى الصِّيَامَ فَقَالَ أَصُومُ غَدًا إِنْ شَاءَ اللَّهِ فَلَا تَبْطُلُ النِّيَةُ بِالْمَشِيئَةِ لِأَنَّهُ يَقْصِدُ الْإِسْتِعَانَ We said that already. وَطَلَبَ التَّوْفِيقُ لَا حَقِيقَةَ الْإِسْتِثْنَى شُرُوطُ النِّيَةِ The conditions for the niyyah. One, البقاء عليها. That you don't annul, that you don't come back on your niyyah. Okay? He says, فَلَوْ رَجَعَ عَمَّا نَوَى لَيْلًا لَمْ يُصِرْ صَائِمًا وَلَوْ أَفْتَرَ لَا شَيْءَ عَلَيْهِ وَلَوْ عَادَ إِلَى تَجْدِيدِ النِّيَةِ فِي وَقْتِهَا صَحَ سِيَامُهُ Yani, he says, you should, yani, hold on to this niyyah. If you had the intention during the night to fast. We're not talking about Ramadan. During the night you had the intention to fast. You sleep. You wake up and you say, I don't fast today. Then you don't have to fast today. Why? Because your niyyah was before the waqt where you would do the song, and this is when it's not a fard. And then you don't need to make up this song. Naam? Now, if you were to have said it yani, after sunrise and you say, I'm going to fast today, then your nafila now turned into something you need to do qada of. Remember, you need to make up the, the, the sawm that you promised to do, which was not obligatory. How did we call this sawm? We said, 
there is a fard mu'ayyan, fard ghayr mu'ayyan, there is a, a what? A wajib mu'ayyan, wajib ghayr mu'ayyan. What is this one? Wajib ghayr mu'ayyan? What do you say? Uh, which kind of psalm is it when I um, broke my promise that I was going to fast a nafila today, an extra fasting? In Hanafi fiqh, when you break that fast, you need to make it up. You need to make up this fasting. So it becomes obligatory upon you to do that. Is it now fard or wajib? Wajib. Why? To start with. Right. And is it mu'ayyan or ghayr mu'ayyan? It all depends. If it was a nafila which was a nether which became wajib, it's different. But it's like, as you said, it's ghayr mu'ayyan. No. Okay. Yes. He's going to give some examples. Maybe some of them will be there. He says, and if it's not there, please tell me. Yeah? لَوْ نَوَى صِيَامَ لَيْلًا فِي رَمَضَانٍ أو النذر المعين ثم نوى الرجوع عن صيامه في الليل فإنه يلزمه القضاء ولا يجب عليه الكفارة لشبهة خلاف من اشترت التبييت لو نوى صيام رمضان أو النذر المعين أو النفل ليلا ثم رجع عن نيته في الصيام ثم عاد إلى نية الصيام قبل الزوال وكان ممسكا عن الأكل والشرب والوطء فإنه يصيح صيامه Now, for example, during the night you say I am not going to fast tomorrow because I'm sick نعم So you are sick, so you say I'm not going to fast Then during the day, when you wake up you say I'm going to fast, you can if you now say during the night, I'm going to fast, and in the morning you wake up, you're sick, and you say, I can't fast, then you just need to make up the day. Is that clear? Now if I say, I start the day where I say, I can't fast, like I sleep and I say, I can't fast. I'm sorry, I'm sick. And I say, I can't fast tomorrow. Then when I wake up, I'm still sick, but during the day it goes away. Now I will not have to do what? Kafara. I will have to do Qada. Is that clear? Now, if I say in the evening, I think I'm going to be sick. I feel I'm becoming sick, so I will not wake up. Right? And when I wake up, my last thing was, I'm not going to fast. And now the zawal has already passed then I will have to make up the fasting and I will have to do kafara. Why? Because I was not sick when I had the niyyah, not to fast. Is that clear? So if I were to have come back on my niyyah before the zawal, it would only have been qada. And there would not be qada and kafara. You, know, you, know, you see the difference? So this is why even when you're sick, intend to fast the next day. And when you wake up and you see you can't, then you have the udhr. But if you have the intention, I will not fast, and you wake up as a healthy person, and you pass the zawal, then what? Then you have a problem, isn't it? No. No. لو نوى صيام الليلا في رمضان If during the night of Ramadan, you have the intention to fast. Or a nether al-mu'ayyan. No. ثم نوى الرجوع عن صيامه في الليل and then during the night you come back on your niyyah. So you have the niyyah to fast. Then in the same night you say, I'm not going to fast. فَإِنَّهُ يَلْزَمُهُ الْقَضَاءِ He needs to make up that fast when he does not fast. But this is not just for anybody, it's for somebody with an excuse, right? This is why I said a, a sick person, not just, well, I'm going to fast tomorrow, well, I'm not. It, it's really about a person that doubts because of his situation. No? So then he says, and he comes back on it, then he doesn't need to, to do kafara, right? Okay? Because he hasn't started the fasting yet. It all happened during the night, isn't it? وَلَا يَجِبُ عَلَيْهِ الْكَفَّارَ لِشُبْهَةِ خِلَافِ مَنِ اشْتَرَةَ التَّبْيِيدِ يعني We see that in the Maliki fiqh, يعني, uh, in, uh, يعني other madahib, they have the tabiyid, they have the ta'yeen, they have the ta'zim, and they have all different, of the azima, all different um, categories which need to be present every night before fasting, for example. 
Now we will see in the Hanafi fiqh, is it sufficient at the beginning or do we need every day? Yes, from the beginning, unless it is interrupted. So you have one niyyah at the beginning of Ramadan, you say, I have the niyyah to fast entire Ramadan, then you don't need a niyyah each night. Why? Because uh, it is like one worship, if you understand what I mean. Um, some say, like, unless it is interrupted by sickness, by travel, or by menstruation and so much more. Because now it is interrupted, because now once again you are in a state where you are not allowed to fast. So what are you going to do now? You need to do tajdidun niyyah. You need to renew your intention. So if because of one reason or the other, you weren't able to fast, you are going to renew your niyyah again. For the rest of the day. What? For the rest of the day. Yes, exactly, yes. And your niyyah is during the night which precedes the day. Not the day where you're in. Nam, it's going to be during the night. Nam. Yes. Well, that, that's what he said, right? He said, when you fast and your qalb is aware that you are fasting, that's your niyyah. Because otherwise it will turn into waswasa. Right? Like you start again, the fact that you start, but if you now, for example, pass your day without even thinking it's Saum, it's Ramadan, it's whatever, and, and you just don't eat and drink, but the, the niyyah or the azm or the, the idea that you are fasting didn't come to your mind, then you were not fasting. Um, so, so that's different. Yes? Yes. Yes. And you don't fast, you don't have to make it up. Why? Because you didn't start your day fasting. Because while you were asleep, the moment that Psalm started, you were asleep, right? So it is only from the moment you wake up now that you will then either be fasting or not, if you understand what I mean. So it is, it is uh, during the day you can still come back on it if you, you fell asleep like that. But if you now, when you wake up, you say, I'm fasting in your mind. Oh, I'm fasting today. And then immediately, one second later, you come back on it, khalas, you need to make up that day. No? Uh, which, is, which is a good thing. No? Uh, you said uh, you, you make the year for the next day during the night, the night before. Mm. So uh, you don't have to do it the day. So, I mean, the yes, you do it at night, yes. Because the night is a part of the day. And because that is where your worship starts, if you understand what I mean. Yes, you do the tabiit niya and the tabiit is the night before that day. No. Um, okay. So now this is very important. The thing here is he said, And also even if you didn't have a specified niya, but when you wake up, you know I'm fasting, it's Ramadan, your, your, your song is valid. So we won't say no, you didn't really mention it, you didn't think it. No, بِقَلْبِهِ يَعْرِفِ This is sufficient. Is that clear? Uh, okay. Then uh, he continues. Um, okay. وَقْتُ niya, The time of the niya. Huh? So this is where our scholars differ about. Right? He says, سَوْمُ رَمَضَانِ وَالنَّفْلْ تَكُونُ نِيَةُ أَدَائِهِ مِنَ اللَّيْلِ so the niya should take place during the night or before the half of the day. Yani the half of the day, they, they mean before dhuhr. Okay. Okay. So he says your niya is valid until yani before dhuhr. Your niyyah is valid even if you didn't have the, the niyyah during the night because it is during the night until the nisf al-nahar al -shara Is that clear? So now even like we see the Prophet ﷺ in the morning after prayer coming to Aisha radiallahu anha and asking her, what do we have to eat today? She says, we have nothing in our home. So he said, إِذَنْ فَإِنِي صَائِمٌ 
So I am fasting. So he did that niyyah during the day, but before the half of the nisf uh, al nahar al-shar'i. So now meaning that you, you might wake up and not have the intention. You didn't have your breakfast. And it's, for example, the, the winter days. They are very short, aren't they? So now you say, well, it's already 11 o'clock. Or it's already 10.30. Only f six hours to go. So why don't I fast then? Yes, let me fast. You can do this. As long as you didn't do something which goes against fasting after sunrise. So if a person was intimate or, or had uh, yani one sip of water, whatever it may be, then, then uh, of course one cannot do this. No? So this is what he's saying. وَإِذَا وُجِدَ قَبْلَهُ مَا يُنَافِيهِ مِنَ الْأَكْلِ وَالشُرْبِ وَالْجِمَاعِ عَامِدًا أَوْ نَاسِيًا فَلَا تَجُوزُ النِّيَةُ بَعْدَ ذَلِكَ Yani, and if he has eaten or drink, if he ate or drank something, or um, yani, was intimate without regards it being deliberate or not deliberately, then what? Then the niya is no longer valid. Is that clear? Even if it's before Nisfun Nahar. Sorry, is the niya just for uh, the double fast, or is it, can it be for a makeup fast as well? No. What? Yes. Is that me just for a fast or it can be for a makeup fast? Makeup fast as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the thing is, if you now say, for example, for you, you say, for example, I think I should be fasting today, that is not a niya. So the moment you are still debating with yourself, trying to convince your ego to follow your soul, that is not a niya. So I might better be fasting, should I be fasting? I don't know. This is not a niya. Khalas, I'm fasting today. Oh, what did I say? Done. <laughs> if you don't fast now, you need to make it up. <laughs> you see? So we said, nahar shari. So we said until the, the half of a day according to the sharia. He said, nahar shari yakunu min istitarati dawi fi ufuqi al mashriqi ila ghurub al shamsi. Wa nisfu al nahar shari yakunu ila dhahwati al kubra. Wa dhahwati al kubra tabda u fi kulli qatrin qabla zawari al shams. يعني بعد أن كانت عمودية إلى وصل بالنصف حسد فجر ذلك اليوم أي نصف الوقت من طلوع الفجر إلى طلوع الشمس. Well, so that's what I've explained. So anyway, are there any questions about what we said until now? We have two more minutes, inshallah. Yes. But say that again. If I wake up, if I wake up with the Lord, then I will fast tomorrow. Is that valid? Okay. Now you connect your suhoor, your fasting to suhoor. Yeah. Yes, it's ishtirat. There is no problem. Yes, there's no problem because you. It's it's a promise. This fasting is a promise. Connect to a condition that you put yourself. That's no problem. Yes, it's it's shart muallaq. No. No. No, I'm saying. I No, it's only when you when you decide to break it that it's gone. Right. Like if you say, "Should I break it?" That's a question in which you what you look at your condition. So you are examining. So Nam, but if you have the check, am I fasting or not? Halas, then your then then your fasting is uh, over. Uh, um. Different question. Uh, at the beginning, you mentioned the, the illness. Yes. And if you don't have the doctor, and but you, you yes, uh, reoccurring. Yeah, yeah. Uh, my mom, she every single time, uh, the first one, two, three days, she she uh, she has a headache. Yes. Yes. In that situation, one lets the doctor decide. If the doctor says it's bad for her health, okay. then she needs to go by what the doctor says. But usually the elder generation, I mean, not that, that our parents are old, but they, they like to hold on to it. They don't want to let go. You know, they, 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 they say, I don't care. I'm, I'm, you know, even if I die, I fast. And very often, not in your case, but very often with, with other people, 
uh, the, 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 it's due to an absence of deeper knowledge of the fasting. That one, one, one says, no, if I don't fast, then this, this is bad, then I'm a weak Muslim, then I'm this and that. So it doesn't work like that. Um, so anyway, um, we, we go, uh, but, but a headache, everybody, or the majority of people, the first two, three days have a headache. And this is because of the detoxication, uh, which is going on, and, and some of the, th the fat which is burning, therein are toxins and so much more which uh, give a headache, the iron which is being released, and everything. I'm not a doctor, right? Uh, but, but these kind of things happen, so the majority of people have a headache in the first two, three days, and, and some don't, so it all depends. Uh, but a doctor should decide. Okay. Ah, the last question is. Excuse me? Yes. 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 So as long as you define it, so some of the scholars would have a formula. They would say in a way to an farida lillahi azza wa jal and so forth. So that is a good thing. As long as you mention what you are about to pray, yeah. it's good. It's not obligatory, meaning that if you don't say it, your prayer is perfectly fine, as long as you know without a big gap between your prayer and your niyyah. Huh? So, so some people, they say, oh, I got to pray dohr. And then they just said it, but an hour later they pray without this niyyah being very close to the prayer, that would be problematic. Others would say no. Because you standing up to pray is the fact that you are going to pray dhuhr. But al-istihdar, istihdar, yani the, 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 the presence of knowing which prayer you are praying right before your prayer is a prerequisite. Yeah, if, uh, if, you're, if you're walking in the street and you hear the adhan, yes. you don't specify the new, but you know that it's an adhan for dhuhr. Our scholars would say your niya need, needs to be very close to your takbirat al-ihram because the niya comes right before your prayer and, and defining what you are praying is a part of your prayer, isn't it? So if you, if you pray asr with the niya of dhuhr but you already pray dhuhr, then you need to pray again. Okay. No. question on the niya. You need to know what you pray. So when you, the moment before you join, for yourself, it needs to be clear. Excuse me? So I know it is Asr Namaz. Yes, that, that's okay. So you, you, as I said, saying it out loud is not obligatory. Nam, so your prayer is perfectly okay. Our scholars would recommend to do this because sometimes we forget. So just knowing, okay, I'm going to join and it's Dohr in your head, that's sufficient. That's fine. Uh, did you have a question? Okay, so that's it. Inshallah, barakallahu feekum, jazakumullah khairan. And then next week we continue with it. And um, those who can come, uh, in our first class we speak about, uh, we, we read the book of Al Harith al Muhasibi, which is a scholar of more than yani, 1150 years ago. And his book is really worth listening to. Yani it's, uh, it's incredible, his words. words. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sallam ajma'in wa akhiru da'wana alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen.